damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 338. Here in the United States, it is coming up on Memorial Day weekend of 2023. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about here on the first and only wrestling podcast. Three wrestling pay-per-views in like, I don't know, there's so much wrestling this weekend. It's a disaster. I don't know who decided this needed to be, needed to happen. And um, yeah, but it begins. Well, it begins with a 19 match Ring of Honor show on Thursday night. It seems excessive. 19 matches. A little bit. I guess that's the new dark. The new AEW dark. Mm-hmm. It didn't take long. No, it did not. Uh, that's Ring of Honor. And then uh, Friday, we have the go-home show for WWE United Champions, which has already been taped. We have the go-home show for AEW Double or Nothing, which has already been taped. Saturday afternoon, we have Night of Champions from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia at the Jetta Superdome. Mm-hmm. Sunday evening, we have NXT Battleground from Lowell, Massachusetts. And we have AEW Double or Nothing from the Team of Arena in uh, the greater Las Vegas area. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> now, Monday night, we have a three hour WWE Raw. Mm-hmm. So, Are the Super Juniors finals this weekend, too? That's right. But. Uh, this is 5.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, by the way, I will um, stay tuned uh, to my social media channels. On Tuesday, I will be uh, live broadcasting my death. <laughs> you going to do a Twitter spaces? Yeah, where you will hear me. I don't mean to make light of this, but uh, take my own life. <laughs> I am not looking forward to this weekend. All right. But uh, we can start with by previewing WWE Night of Champions. Seven big matches. The advertising for this show says a triple main event. You have three main events. Do you have any main events? <sighs> Seth Rollins will face AJ Styles in a tournament final to crown the inaugural. World heavyweight champion Seth and AJ. You know, about a decade ago, this would have torn the house down. Mm hmm. Seth is still real good. Sure. I think the jury's out on AJ. What do you think of this match? <laughs> yeah. It's not only is it 2023 AJ, he's coming off of a very long layoff. And I know he's. He had the one match on SmackDown. And he's, I'm sure he's worked some some house shows or whatever since then, if they've run any. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't really think that AJ is a, a great wrestler anymore, as we've talked about many times on the show. Um, and they're wrestling in front of a crowd, which has uh, at times in the past been apathetic <laughs> to what was happening in the ring. Uh, and they're wrestling for the third place trophy. <laughs> so not a lot going for them other than, hey, it's Seth Rollins and and he's still very good. And theoretically, AJ Styles could still be good. Um, could still do all the signature AJ Styles stuff, at least, um, and knows how to put a match together. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe this will be good. <laughs> That's about the strongest endorsement I can give it. It might be good. Naturally. Cody Rhodes facing Brock Lesnar. No stipulation. Just a one-on-one match. Mm -hmm. Is Cody going to beat Brock two times in a row? Well, the the big hook is they're they're trying to manufacture, I guess, 
re rekindle the magic of Cody with his uh his uh his torn pec from last year. He's he's going in injured with a a broken arm. <laughs> and he's going to wrestle Brock Lesnar. There's nothing yeah. on the line in this match. So I don't know why. I mean, couldn't we just delay this? It's not like Cody is say um the world champion for instance where you know he would have to forfeit something if if the match were delayed. Well, they did a show long storyline on Raw about Cody uh Brock Lesnar broke Cody's arm twice during the show. Mm-hmm. And uh and Cody refused medical attention and uh, refused to listen to Adam Pierce or uh Papa H. So Yeah, that was the finale of the show which I thought was interesting to do a little a little heart to heart from from Paul and uh from Cody. I don't know, like it's it's nothing they've done has been bad. Like I don't think it's bad, but we just saw this a few weeks ago with a clean finish. So I guess you would assume Cody having an injury is an out so that Brock can beat him and then you can do a third match in wherever in London in, in July or or SummerSlam or whatever whatever they would want to do then. Um but, you know, also maybe Cody will just win again. I don't know. <laughs> the undisputed tag team titles are on the line with Kevin Owens defend- and Sami Zayn, depending against the bloodline. The- this iteration of the bloodline will be Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa, as Roman is disappointed in the Usos. And so he and Solo are going to show them how to win the tag team titles from Kevin and Sami. Uh, Sammy making his first uh, Saudi Arabia show appearance. Mm-hmm. B- believe the same for Kevin Owens. But uh, I like the I'm ready for the bloodline versus Kevin and Sammy story to be over. But uh, I like the the twist of Roman and Solo going for the tag titles. What do you think? Yeah, it's a new match at the very least. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. You would imagine that they they have to further the bloodline stuff with this match. And I don't it doesn't make any sense for Roman to win the tag titles. Uh, so I assume probably maybe some backfiring interference from the Usos in here and you get to further the the family drama angle of the bloodline and then, you know, let, let Sammy and Kevin move on to uh, Imperium or, or Judgment Day or whoever they, they put them with next. Just, you know, really anybody else would be uh, would be fine with me. <laughs> Mustafa Ali is the number one contender to the <laughs> WWE Intercontinental title. He won a battle royal on Raw to earn this right uh, two weeks ago, I think. And uh, now he's challenging Gunther for the IC title. I don't like his chances. <laughs> I guess the question is, and we may have mentioned this last week, is does he get uh, the same treatment that Ricochet got when he wrestled Brock in Saudi Arabia, or does he actually get to at least like, you know, do a move or two before Gunther kills him? I think it would be very, the I'm just for, for the funniest thing. The funniest mm-hmm. thing would be him getting zero offense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. who's he, you know, he, <laughs> this guy, that's this, this guy's whole career in WWE is fascinating because they clearly do. The Paul regime does not appear to value him any more than the Vince regime did. And now the Vince regime is back anyway. But it's like, but yet they won't fire him. <laughs> At least not yet. Even yeah. though we asked for it like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Um, Raw Women's Champion and SmackDown Superstar Bianca Belair <laughs> will be defending the Raw Women's Championship against SmackDown Superstar Asuka. WrestleMania rematch. They probably forget they did it at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Any anything to add to that? Not not really. I, Asuka kind kind of a heel now. Yeah, she spit the mist at uh that Bianca, which I think we talked about leading up to that WrestleMania match. That um as good as Bianca is, she probably needs like a like a more like gritty feud. You know something with an edge that can maybe let her show a new dimension of her 
of herself. So theoretically, Asuka being the heel and being crazy and in the indestructible heel gives her a chance to be, gives Bianca a chance to do something different. So yeah, I'm sure it'll be a good match. Um, and maybe maybe the start of Bianca getting getting to do something uh, a little bit different after kind of being in a holding pattern for a while now. Raw superstar Rhea Ripley will be defending the SmackDown Women's Championship against Raw superstar Natalia. Good for Natty, I guess, for getting a pay-per-view match. She, has she wrestled on like every Saudi show since they started letting women on the show? Uh, she's done at least one. I don't, I don't really watch the Saudi shows, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's nighttime for you. It kind of is, yeah. I um, I usually I put the shows on and then I fall asleep. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Um, we know she's been on at least one. She and uh, Lacey Evans, I think, wrestled on one. Yeah, I think that was the the first ever women's match that you know solved all problems that women in that country had. I understand. <laughs> Groundbreaking, trailblazing. That's right. That's right. Good for Natty for still being around. <laughs> Yeah, she's on uh she's on the wrong side of 40. Mm-hmm. It's been there for a lot of years. And uh she's gotten herself in the best shape of her life. Good for yeah. her. And when she's not wrestling, she's you know training all of the WWE Performance Center people to teach them how to actually wrestle. So yeah. she's got a good side gig too. Yeah. Talk about this every time this comes up on the show. I can't believe WWE hasn't shut. <laughs> <laughs> hasn't shut Natty and TJ's garage down. It makes their performance center look so bad when people from the performance center or graduates of their performance center come out of their bad and then go to Natty and TJ's garage. And after like, you know, eight hours of working there over two weeks, they come out and then all of a sudden they're competent pro wrestlers. Yeah. Really shocking that they I mean, haven't if, shut that down. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would say the glass half full. I'd be like, well, it sounds like TJ and Natty should be the head trainers of the performance center. Yep. <laughs> but the glass half empty way is to go. Yeah, that makes them <laughs> <laughs> the the more perhaps the more realistic way to look at that is them go. Uh, no, we don't want we don't want people training outside of the performance center. They might get hurt. Right. As opposed to at the performance center where they just tear every ligament in their legs. <laughs> Right. Well, they got the new strength coach who decided everybody's not jacked enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now everybody on the show is noticeably more jacked and also injured. (laughs) (laughs) Damnedest thing I ever saw. And then uh, the secret plan will come to Mm -hmm. fruition. Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. I am on one hand bummed that this is happening where it's happening because I can't travel to it. However, I'm also kind of relieved that I don't have to travel to Detroit for SummerSlam this summer. Um, what, what if they do a rematch there? Uh, I still think it's probably a no. Okay. <laughs> it depends. It depends. But uh, yeah, Becky and Trish. Um, I would like to thank these two. First of all, thank you, Trish, of course. Sure. Secondly, I would like to thank them for their contract signing segment on this week's Raw, where Becky Lynch added to my absolute favorite genre a video on the internet, (laughs) which is Becky Lynch saying the word bitch. (laughs) No one on earth says the word bitch bitch the way that Becky Lynch does and she added to it this week so that is absolutely tremendous big week for you yes yes yeah I mean I, yeah like like you said I wish this was happening anywhere else but uh, at least we got that if nothing else we'll we'll see what Trish has she uh, came out of retirement and had her first singles match in 14 years uh, or 13 years uh, at the 2019 SummerSlam and had the best match on the show mm-hmm. with Charlotte Flair. Uh, we'll see it, what Father Time has done here uh, almost four years later. Yeah. But 
Speaking of potential rematches, do you get a sense? Do you feel like this is it and it's over after this one? Or do you think you stay, she stays around for a little bit longer or at least maybe comes back around the Summerfest? I think she's in through SummerSlam. Whether, I don't think that's every week, but I think mm-hmm. she's in through SummerSlam. So we'll see. We shall see. All right. That is Night of Champions. See if they had anything pre show match or anything uh, during SmackDown. I don't think they will, but all right. Head to head on Sunday NXT Battleground and AEW Double or Nothing. I know you're not a big NXT guy, so I'll just run through this <laughs> real quick. Carmelo Hayes, who's a good guy now, will defend the NXT title against Braun Breaker, who's a bad guy now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the finals for a tournament to crown a new NXT Women's Champion after Indy Hartwell was forced to vacate that title. Lyra Valkyria will face Tiffany Stratton. Uh, Lyra Valkyria is a bird lady. (laughs) If you've ever seen (laughs) the Disney children's classic Mary Poppins from the 1960s, I believe 1960... Six, seven. I don't know. Anyway, there is a uh, a woman in the movie who f- feeds the birds mm-hmm. uh, for tuppence a bag. She sells ba- small bags of bread for tuppence, two pence, uh, that you can buy and then feed the pigeons. But she's a crazy old bird lady. That's Lyra's character. I see. She's the bird lady from Mary Poppins. And Tiffany Stratton is uh, uh, 1999 Trish Stratus. That's her character. Um, she's so good. All right. <laughs> uh, the NXT Heritage Cup is on the line in a British rule, rounds rules match with Noam Dar defending against Dragon Lee. Can I ask what the British rounds rules are? You can ask. I'm not sure I can tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> There's six three minute rounds. Ugh. After the six three minute rounds, if there's, oh, I don't, I gotta look it up. <laughs> I gotta look it up. Okay, six three minute rounds, 20 second breaks between each round. Mm-hmm. The matches or the rounds are two out of three falls. Falls can occur by pinfall, submission, or count up. Mm-hmm. Once a fall happens, the round ends. Well, that doesn't make any sense be- it, because matches are two out of three falls. Right. The match ends once a wrestler has won two falls. Okay, so the matches are two out of three falls, not the rounds. Okay. Um, In the event of a DQ or a knockout, the match instantly ends without the need for two falls. If all six rounds are completed, whoever is ahead on falls wins the match. It's really quite simple, is what you're saying. Yes. So, okay, there were multiple tournaments here. So every for for in the history of the uh, NXT Heritage Cup, mm-hmm. so every one, every single match in these tournaments has ended two falls to one. All right, sure. <laughs> I I don't I don't know, man. They did a video package on this week's NXT explaining the rules. Um, I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes. Dragon Lee, they're pushing. Noam Dar is the has held the Heritage Cup for five hundred some odd days, and uh, he lost on a on the go home show. So I I, I don't like his chances. <laughs> I like Dragon Lee's chances. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh Triple threat match for the NXT North American Championship: Wesley versus Tyler Bate versus Joe Gacy. They've been doing a weeks long friendship with Wesley, the champion, and Tyler Bate. Where um, the subtext is Tyler Bate is going to turn on Wesley. 
Mm-hmm. But then uh, they got into a shoving match on uh, on the go home show. All right. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov versus Dijak in a last man standing match. Mm-hmm. Um, Dijak is a uh, former uh, Dominic Dijakovic. Mm-hmm. Um, except now he looks like Zack Ryder. And the former T-Bar. Let's not forget. Correct. Yes. And then uh, Gallus, Mark Coffey, and Wolfgang will be defending the uh, NXT tag title against the Creed Brothers. Creed Brothers are great. Gallus, I don't get, but hang on, not listed on this on the on this card here. Mm -hmm. There is a weaponized steel cage match taking place with uh, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane, the former uh, flunkies for uh, Mandy Rose. There, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'll be. um... Oh no, no, that's on next week's NXT. Never mind. Oh, okay. (laughs) I remember the graphic. I didn't remember when it was uh, added or what, what show it was added to. Okay. So that's the next key battleground. That's going head to head with AEW double or nothing. Horrible idea on all parts. <laughs> Horrible idea. Uh, Tony Khan was asked about this and uh, he's like, I'm all for a good competition when it is done ethically. Oh, so you mean you like predatory business practices, except when someone employs predatory business practices against you. I understand. I understand. That's straight out of Vince McMahon's playbook there. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, What are you looking forward to on this AEW show before I read off the matches? Uh, Probably. I think the elite match. I think that's we've talked about it over the last few weeks. I think that's been the consistently best thing on AEW television for a while now. And they've built it up and it feels like it's coming to the head. It feels like like the, there's a thousand factions in AEW, but these feel like the two biggest ones. And now they're going to have a big wild brawl. And uh, and I think that'll that'll be great. So that's probably the biggest one I'm uh, I'm looking forward to. And then the other thing I think uh, is, is there a big angle at the end of this show, perhaps to to hype up uh, this? I mean, God, they got so many things going on. They got Forbidden Door coming up next month. They got Collision kicking off and whatever else they got going on. So will they will they shoot a big angle to end the show or is this just four hours of mostly very good wrestling that you become numb to after the two and a half hour mark because you're tired? Um, we'll we'll have to wait and see. Four and a half to five hours of wrestling. Let's mm-hmm. not undersell that. <laughs> I think what I would do, since uh, it was confirmed this week that CM Punk is coming back Mm -hmm. and uh, reportedly had to sign a lot of papers saying that he wouldn't publicly talk about the fight and he wouldn't publicly disparage anyone. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe don't put him in front of a live microphone in front of the media Uh after five hours of wrestling. That's That's a good place to start, I think. But uh, Punk is officially back in the fold, and Ace Steel is back working from home. <laughs> How is one the agent for the world champion from home? I'm not sure. I guess you can deliver all the same information. Faxes. He faxes the finish for all Punk's match in. matches in. Makes sense. Sure, why not? I would. Uh, I would do video. I would do a big show closing angle. Would be a mystery video package. Where yeah. after MJF retains, uh, somebody says, uh, I'm coming for you. And then the video says the second coming. And it's heavily implied that it's CM Punk. Yeah, I think that's a good way to do. It. And it plays off of what was supposed to be the feud when MJF came back last uh, last August. Was you did the, the big video package with the and then he walked out in the devil mask or whatever and and then unmasked in the show. So yeah, I think I think you can hold off. Since you didn't announce him back yet, um, you don't have to do that. But yeah, I think that's a good idea would be to just as you said, just heavily, heavily imply in case in case anyone has any doubts that it's that that's the move and that that's kind of a direction for the for the summer. All right, let's talk about the cart. Adam Cole versus Chris Jericho in an unsanctioned match with Sabu as the special <laughs> guest enforcer, naturally. If you, 
if you had given me a thousand guesses before Sabu walked out on Dynamite last night as to who uh, you could have even said like a special guest referee who is considered like a hardcore wrestling legend. I still don't think I would have guessed Sabu in a million years. You probably would have guessed Mick Foley, uh, right. the Sandman, mm-hmm. uh, Tom Dreamer. Exactly. Dreamer, Taz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just nope. incredible. I would have guessed like so many names. Like anybody that's still like active on indies or who or whatever, like I could have I could have guessed, but <laughs> Yeah, somebody who's not 58 and uh, clinging to life. <laughs> yeah, um, but <laughs> they went God. a different way. They went a different way, and it made uh, it made Shad Khan very happy because <laughs> he remembers taking his son Tony to the ECW arena and seeing and seeing Sabu. Do you think there's any passive aggressive element at all to the text message that Shad <laughs> sent? Tony, Tony announced on his press call this week. He's like, "Yeah, my dad sent me a text that said blast from the past." <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Shad in his head is just like doing the math on? Okay, why are you bringing in these old? <laughs> why right. are you spending my money on these old guys? Exactly. Do you think there's any any passive aggressiveness to the blast from the past text? I I mean, look, it's a it's a if it's, it's a very rich father tweeting his his uh his very rich son so i think there's always an element of passive aggression (laughs) to any any interactions that a billionaire has with their son excellent real life billionaires and fictional billionaires have taught me anything there's always a little bit of passive aggression to any interactions you have excellent i hope so all right six man tag team match with uh tony khan's favorite stipulation Ethan Page, Austin Gunn, and Colton Gunn will be wrestling Hook and the Hardys. Hook is a a replacement for uh, Isaiah Cassidy, who got hurt. Uh, But the stipulation here is if the Hardys win, Matt Hardy will own Ethan Page's contract. Wow, wow, wow. This is like the fifth time Matt Hardy has wrestled for somebody's contract or his contract has been. Yes, it's a terrible story. Who cares? Who could possibly care? Yeah, I don't like you could do this once in a while. And it's like if you do it with the baby face has to join the heel faction or do what the heel says or whatever. But it's just like they've they've done. They just did this. (laughs) That was the whole reason they did the last. Not final deletion. Yeah, the final final deletion was was for the Hardys and and Isaiah to get out of out of the firm contract, and now we're just we're just doing it again. Yep. Yep. We learned no lessons. Yeah, you know, like I like Ethan Page. Like he's not like he wouldn't be like a top guy in my wrestling federation, but he's like a you know you need like a Brad Armstrong in your <laughs> in your crew. You know he, he's. He's a competent pro wrestler who seems like a very nice man. Sure. Like, I'm not saying you have no, I have, I would have no place for him, but like Ethan Page and Matt Hardy have been feuding for like nine months in this company. And I just, I just don't get it. Well, we do long term, we do long term storytelling. Ah, yes. How could I forget? I suppose. I don't know. All right, uh, Jay Cargill versus uh, Ty Valkyrie for the TBS title. We're doing it again. <laughs> yeah, Jade beat Ty, uh, and then uh, then we're gonna wrestle again. I'm about to sneeze. Give me a moment, please. <laughs> Never mind. All good. <laughs> Jade versus Ty. They're doing it again. Um, it's rare that uh, Jade gets a uh, a second opponent or uh, the same opponent a second time, so that's a departure. Um, I don't think uh, I don't think Ty is going to beat her. No, I just and God knows like if it matters or whatever. Like, but it you've built her up for so long. The idea that. Taya would be the one like I mean not 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 that there's like an obvious candidate <laughs> right but like 
you'd think maybe you would be someone that could get a little bit more out of it. And I think Taya is kind of at the level she's going to be on AEW television. Uh, I don't think beating Jade would really help her that much or, or change how fans view her. But, you know, look, like you said, it's at least they're building on a rematch. The last match, Taya couldn't use her finishing move. And I guess this time she can. So there's your <laughs> there's your 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 point of difference for this one. They have the same finish. Both wrestlers have the same finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jade is the queen of the division where none of the stars want her belt. Mm-hmm. So she just beats everyone who isn't a star and she stays at the same level. And uh, if anyone beats her, it's not going to help the person that beats her. It's going to hurt her. Yeah, feels that way. Yeah, that sounds terrible. They did a um, a match on the Go Home show on the Go Home Dynamite with uh, Taya against Lady Frost. Mm-hmm. And I got nothing against Taya Valkyrie. I, but Lady Frost looks much, much better in the match than Taya did. She did. <laughs> it's like, uh, is the wrong person getting the TBS championship match on, mm-hmm. <laughs> on Sunday? Well, Lady Frost isn't Conan's goddaughter, is, is she? <laughs> Certainly not. There was no smoothing over. There was no uh, political relationships to smooth over with any any promotions. I, not that I'm saying that's why I came in. I just there were some there were some you know shaky waters in that AAA relationship for a little while, and you know now Kenny's going to wrestle Vikingo at one of the Triple Manias this summer again. So, uh, Anarchy in the Arena. As you mentioned, you're looking forward to this. Danielson, Moxley, Claudio, and Wheeler versus Kenny, Matt, Nick, and Ole Hanger. Yeah, yeah, I think this will be this will be wacky and crazy, and there will be blood and big stunts and everything. These types of matches, I've never gone back to any of them. Not that there's like an easy legal way to rewatch anything AEW puts on anyway. Sure. But like these matches, I think are great to watch live. <laughs> I don't know how they would be. Like I've never, I've never wanted to go back and rewatch this or the, the other arena things they did. I mean, I don't really want to go back and watch anything from COVID wrestling. But, um, so I don't, I, I don't know if this is going to be an all time classic or anything. But I think in the moment, this will be like the most fun anybody will have all night on this show. Where they place this on the card will be very interesting. Uh, women's world title. Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm. Jamie is hurt. I assume she's not going to be in this match. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. Everyone's being very tight-lipped and cryptic about this. Tony Khan said on his call today, that, or Thursday, that uh, Jamie Hader is hurt. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reporting, Jamie is hurt. Jamie is hurt. There's a lot of changes coming to this division. Whatever the hell that means. That's a riddle. I I don't speak in riddles. (laughs) So I don't understand what that means. But the advertised match to this point is Jamie Heater versus Tony Storm, which we've seen before and would be very good. Yeah, I guess I guess it's just the question. Is she so hurt? She can't work at all. And we're going to get a Tony versus somebody else for an interim belt. Is she hurt, but she can do one more match and Tony's going to win the belt from her. And then she's going to go off and get whatever the injury is fixed. Will there be just no match and they'll do a big angle or a debut or something instead? Who knows? (laughs) But uh, a lot of, I guess a lot of mystery around this one. Could be any number of a thousand things. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like that year that uh, Bianca was supposed to wrestle Sasha at SummerSlam and they waited until Bianca was in the ring to announce that Sasha wasn't there. Correct. Yes. Because she uh, she did not believe in vaccines at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she said she's since come around. Oh, good. But uh, she had, she had her, her, her crystal guy <laughs> taught her about how vaccines work. Well, I'm not sure it's so much that as you needed to be vaccinated to be allowed into Japan. 
Ah. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, more of a business decision. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I'm sure her crystal guy gave her something to counteract the, yep. the bad effects of the vaccine. Probably so. Mercedes uh, broke her ankle, by the way. Um, yes. In her uh, title match at the New Japan pay-per-view last weekend. And yeah, that, uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, they I don't think it's the secret. Like, they made a belt for her. Yep. And now, uh, you know, God bless Willow. But that obviously wasn't the plan. So uh, we'll we'll see what happens there. But yeah, that sucks. Hopefully it's, you know, she's uh, literally back on her feet in not too long. So let me just let me recap this real quick. She does a, a move where she jumps off the post to the, to the floor. It's not the move that Melina did when she suffered the same injury the same way. Mm-hmm. But Melina also once broke her ankle diving off the top rope to the floor. So maybe we should yeah. just not not let anybody do that no more. But so she gets she dives off. She breaks her ankle. She gets back in the ring. She tries to do the match for about another minute. Uh, she can't put any weight on her leg. So uh, she tells Willow, slam me, boss. She <laughs> says, power bomb me and pin me. Willow power bombs her, covers, one, two. Mercedes doesn't kick out. Referee doesn't speak English, doesn't understand what's going on, and then acts like she rolled her shoulder, which she did not. So then Willow, once again, picks her up, power bombs her. <laughs> This time the referee counts to three. Very awkward sequence there. Oof. Yeah. So best <laughs> best wishes to her. But I guess that would be the thing because if anyone thought the big thing was Mercedes finally coming in, don't don't expect that, I would guess, based on last weekend. Yep. All right. Blackjack Battle Royal for the International Championship. Mm-hmm. Here are the people. Uh, challenging for Orange Cassidy's title in this battle royal. The Butcher and the Blade. Bandito and Commander. Mm -hmm. Big Bill and Lee Moriarty. Mm -hmm. Ari Davari and Tony Nese. Chuck Taylor and Trent Barrena. Why are they challenging for the Friends title? I don't know. Kip Sabian. Uh, The Lucha Bros. Phoenix and Penta. Dustin Rhodes and Keith Lee. Swerve Strickland and Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, Juice Robinson, Jay White. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I prefer this to them doing a battle royal and then also adding two more matches to the show with Jay and Ricky again and Keith and Swerve or a tag match with Keith and Dustin against Swerve and whoever. So this is the the old the old the old faithful get everybody on the show and uh you know let them let them continue their feuds onto tv next week or whatever so yeah and the only question is is orange too tired <laughs> he's a little bit more tired and a little bit more taped up every week yes um i would think he wins this and then maybe they go and do the brody lee cody thing with him and rush or powerhouse Hobbs or somebody in a few weeks here. It's a possibility. Certainly a possibility. All right. Letter match for the TNT title. Wardlow versus Christian Cage. Arn Anderson will be in Wardlow's corner and the Luchasaurus (laughs) will be in Christian Cage's corner. It's a ladder match because reasons. Mm Mm-hmm. Christian Christian's uh, the ladder match guy, or he was 30 years ago. Yep. Um, so so we're doing another one. I don't know. I think this could be fun because I imagine they'll work it, especially because there's a bunch of other crazy stunt hardcore stuff on this show. Uh, they'll probably work it more like an old school ladder match where it's a wrestling match with some spots with a ladder in it. And, and we can you- hope. Um, and also probably would be the best because Christian's like 50 years old and gets hurt when he just does regular wrestling matches a lot now. Yeah. So he don't need to be, you know, falling off 20 foot ladders as well. So I, yeah, I don't know. Like it's, it's, 
seems too soon to beat Wardlow already, this poor fella, but they also love to beat Wardlow. <laughs> so <laughs> they love pulling the rug out from under Wardlow. So maybe, and Christian gets a lot of heat every week. So maybe they should put the belt on him. Who cares? Yep. Who could possibly care? FTR. Uh, Hank Van Honk and Mr. Dickhead <laughs> will be defending the AW World Tag Team Championships against Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Mark Briscoe will be the special guest referee. And Karen Jarrett, Sanjay Dutt, and Satnam Singh. Karen, by God, Jarrett, Sanjay <laughs> Dutt, and Satnam Singh will be in uh, Jeff and Jay Lethal's corner. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff what, going on. What a feud. Uh, yeah, so I whose idea do you think it was to do a segment where hair FDR was very reasonable and calm and then Mr. Dickhead bald FDR uh, ran his mouth and pissed off uh, <laughs> pissed off Mark Briscoe to the point where he slapped him in the face. Whose idea, whose clever little subtle idea was it to have uh, Mr. Dickhead's mouth get a, get FDR <laughs> into more trouble than they were before the segment started? Very meta. I'm not sure, but yes, that's 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 the uh, the context. Who's Mark Briscoe going to side with? Seemingly nobody, except he's trying to uh, to turn Jay Lethal back to the good side. Uh, that's the that's the the meta thing here. Which <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the that's the other part of this. Is he he slapped everyone else, but he didn't slap Jay because he and he and Mark are, are bros. So I guess that's that's a direction. But uh, hey, Jeff and Jay should win the tag titles because their weird little oddity stable is wildly entertaining to me, and I, I hate, <laughs> I hate bald FDR. So uh, I think Jay and Jeff should win the tag titles here. But that's just me being uh, incredibly biased. Only thing I'd like to add, and really, if if you've listened to this show at any point over the last nine plus years that we've been doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's really only one thing that I want the listener to take away, and if the listener only remembers one thing from from me personally, at least on this show, this would be the thing. I cannot stress enough how much <laughs> when I was a child, fifty two fifty two year old women looked like Mark Briscoe <laughs> or Greg the Hammer Valentine. Or Big John Stud, <laughs> or Handsome Johnny Valiant, <laughs> and now fifty-two-year-old women look like Karen Jarrett, or Jennifer Garner, or Jennifer Lopez, or Jennifer Anderson, any of the Jennifers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Trish Stratus. I'm not throwing her in there yet. She's only forty-seven, but you get the point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, women of a certain age looked like Satnam Singh. They look like <laughs> Dax. They look like Dax Har- Harwood wearing a wig. They look like Cash Wheeler. <laughs> they look like uh, <laughs> the Hockey Talk Man with his jumpsuit. Um, they look like uh, Jimmy Hart if he shaved his beard. <laughs> That's what fifty-two-year-old women looked like when I was a child. Ooh. And now they look like Karen by God Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Unreal. Pretty cool. All right. So that's the thing that I want the listener to take away from really anything i've ever said Agreed. just just evolution is a mystery <laughs> all right and then uh the main event four away for the ew world title the four pillars mjf sammy guevara darby allen and junk boy jack perry in a four way for the to crown the aew world champion is there anyone on earth who thinks sammy guevara is going to win the title <laughs> jungle boy jack perry is going to win the title um is there any portion of the audience whatsoever that thinks Darby Allen is going to win the title? Or is this just have going to be a probably a pretty good match that caps a very lackluster pay-per-view build? Uh, I think it's the latter. I think Where it, MJF retains. Yeah. Yeah. MJF is going to retain. It'll be a very good match. Um, I think this is uh, something of the uh, the whole thing being worse than the sum of its parts. Uh, I think I think ironically, we we when this was first being set up, we were kind of going back and forth 
uh, amongst ourselves here about whether this was a four way, whether this should be a four way, who of, you know, uh, would it be Jack or, or Darby if it was a singles match? Um, turns out I think it should have been Darby. Like if any of these people should be wrestling MJF in the main event of a pay-per-view, Darby surprisingly has kind of held his own the best as far as actually trying to talk, you know, talk you into caring about it. But no, I don't think anyone thinks MJF is losing the belt here. And I don't think anyone believes that Jungle Jack or, or Sammy or, or even Darby have a, have a real chance to win on this show. But, uh, you know, we, we tried something. We, we, we're going to, we're, by God, we're, we're putting, putting all these young, these young kids into the, into the deep end and seeing if they can swim and mixed results to say the least. But, um, hey, we got a lot of stuff. It feels like everyone, including Tony Khan, is looking past this show because, as mentioned, you've got this collision show, you've got Pug coming back, you've got Forbidden Door in uh, another month after this show. So uh, this feels like, uh, I would quite say a lame duck show, but trending in that direction. All right, we've uh, spanned the globe. We've covered all the major pay per coming up this weekend. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that about uh, that about covers it. Hiromu's not going to win the best of the Super Juniors for the first time since like 2016, so that's something. Uh, they they pick, pick some new guys to uh, to go far in the tournament this year. Yeah, they definitely need some new blood over there, especially in the uh, in the junior heavyweight division. Mm-hmm. All right, well, till next time, everybody. I'm Ethan. I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. And now everybody's happy. Punk has a show. (laughs) The Elite have a show. Jay has a show. Conan has a show. And I have I, a show. I, I did see Jay Leno's Garage was on the bubble for renewal. So I'm not sure that Jay is, has a show anymore. Oh, that's... Oh, he still has that syndicated show. Isn't he doing that syndicated show? Hey, he, he was doing, doing the game show. I, I don't know. I haven't... Yeah. I haven't checked to see if it's still in my local listings lately or not. Yeah. I just... I just... The one time when I heard it was coming out, I saw he was doing headlines <laughs> on, on, on his game show. And I was like, this <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> You know he's pressing local affiliates to try to get it aired at eleven thirty. Yes, <laughs> yes. On all these syndicated stations, it's airing. Like, eh, I, just think, I just think it would look better at eleven thirty after the news. <laughs> America's best friend. <laughs> I'm I'm seeing Blink one hundred and eighty two two times this weekend. Ah, huh. in what can only be described as a terrible mistake. Well, that's certainly one way to live your life. <sighs> Wasn't my idea. Uh, but uh, it'll be fun. But I think I will also be dead. I try to keep on keeping on.